CNN interview with Kamala Harris and Tim Walls hosted on CNN by Dana Bash. CNN clipped this into three different parts, one, two, and three, and I'm going to do the same thing. So this is part two. I already did part one, although you can watch any order really because this interview is not really like one part doesn't really lead into the other one. It can pretty much be thought of, I think, as three different interviews, but either way, I could go. you can go watch part one. It'll be linked in the description or you can just start here. Um, yeah, I think starting here is totally fine, but we'll get it going here. Okay. Um, another issue, big one, is immigration. Mm -hmm. As vice president, you were tasked with addressing the root causes of migration uh, uh, in southern countries and northern part of Central America. The northern part of, 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 uh, of Central America that deals with that affects the southern border of the U.S. Mm -hmm. During the Biden Harris administration, there were record numbers of illegal border crossings. Ooh. Why did the Biden Harris administration wait three and a half years to implement sweeping asylum restrictions? So for, I made this point in the first video, but people criticizing the CNN interview for being softball. I don't think it's softball. If you maybe follow politics all the time, you're going to have certain expectation, but picture you're someone that is just like politics is kind of at the fringe and they live there. This is probably most voters. You just live your life. And every four years, if it's a presidential election, you're going to maybe tune in a little bit for like the top moments. And this is Kamala's only interview so far, which is ridiculous. So maybe you're going to tune into this and, like, that's a pretty tough question, actually, but let's see her answer here. Well, first of all, uh, the root causes work that I did as vice president that I was asked to do by the president has actually resulted in a number of benefits, including historic investments by American businesses in that region. Um, the number of uh, immigrants coming from that region has actually reduced um, since we began that work. But I will say this, that... Joe Biden and I and our administration. I don't even know what she meant there. The, the investments in which region? What's she talking about? The border? Where is she talking about the, in terms of that region? South America? Administration worked with members of the United States Congress on an immigration uh, issue that is very significant to the American people and to our security, which is the border. Mm -hmm. And through bipartisan work, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress, a bill was crafted, which we supported, which I support. And Donald Trump got word of this bill that would have contributed to securing our border. And because he believes that it would not have helped him politically, he told his folks in Congress, don't put it forward. He killed the bill a border security bill that would have put 1,500 more agents on the border. So f first of all, even if this is true, so someone fact check me on this because I, I don't think it's true that like that bill was just crushed for this. I think it was because it had other things in it. But to be honest, I'm not totally versed on what exactly happened there. I know Democrats are going to try to paint this as uh, Trump just did this for partisan gain so we can run on this issue. Uh I've heard different, but yeah, fact check that in the comments if you want. But the other thing about this is just the border is so bad right now and has been for the basically the most part of Biden's term, the Biden-Harris administration. So I think this is a tough look for her just to say, oh, why is the border so bad? To just kind of a little bit of a pivot, not even a little bit, just a pivot to, well, we were trying to fix it like three and a half years into our administration and then Donald Trump, Told, told Congress to not do this, but I mean, that doesn't really answer why it was so bad, but we'll see what she does in the rest of this answer. And let me tell you something, the Border Patrol endorsed the bill. And I'm that. sure, and I'm sure in large part because they knew they were working around the clock and 1,500 more agents would help them. That bill would have allowed us to increase seizures of fentanyl. Ask any community in America that has been devastated by fentanyl, what passing that bill would have done to address their concern and a pain that they've so experienced. Would, so you would push that legislation again. I just want Not to ask only about push it. I will make sure that it comes to my desk and I would sign it. Just one other question about uh, something that you said in 2019 when you first ran. There was a debate. You raised your hand when asked whether or not uh, the border should be decriminalized. Do you still believe that? I believe there should be consequence. We have laws that have to be followed and enforced. 
that address and deal with people who cross our border illegally, and there should be consequences. And let's be clear, in this race, I'm the only person who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations who traffic in guns. She never answered that question, though. When she she just said there has to be consequences, does it need to be decriminalized? That's all. Like, to, to be honest, though, for, from Kamala's point of view, I don't mind her ducking that answer. This is where this is where I would agree with the people criticizing CNN. Dana Bash should follow up on that. That's not Kamala's fault, actually. That's basically her being a pretty good politician. Trump does the same thing. Any politician does the same thing. Why would she if she if she's going to get away with not answering that question? It's better for her because then people on the le people that are way more left wing can interpret that as they want, and then people who are more centrist and Kamala is clearly trying to get both people, just like Donald Trump will be trying to get people that are f farther right and centrists. That's on Dana Bash actually to to come back and say, okay, what do you mean by consequences? Would you decriminalize it? Yes or no? So I actually don't mind. It's not Kamala's like. That's actually a smart political answer by Kamala there, in my opinion, for sure. Guns, drugs, and human beings. I'm the only person in this race who actually served a border state as attorney general to enforce our laws. And I would enforce our laws as president going forward. I recognize the problem. Generally speaking, how should voters look at some of the changes? That is a tough issue, though. For like, I think most people in the polls back this up. Trump was generally good on the border so i think that's a tough that's a tough issue for kamala harris the border like immigration in general but especially the southern border i think the majority and yeah the polls do back so the majority of americans are on the side of donald trump at this moment on the border for sure changes that you've made uh that you've explained some of here uh in your policy is it because you have more experience now and you've learned more about the information is it because you were running for president in a Democratic primary? And should they feel comfortable and confident that what you're saying now is going to be your policy moving forward? Dana, I think the, the, the most important and most significant aspect of... And again, so I, when I did the first... I think Dana Bash, so far, Dana Bash and CNN have been worse in the second part. These are more like... That was a pretty much... What is going on with these balloons? That happened in the other... Am I saying something that's like, I got to fix that because did they, did they just go off? What am I doing to get that balloon trigger on my screen? What is happening? Happy birthday. Am I saying something? Bash. Have a bash. I don't know. Anyway, um, like that was a pretty, that, that was like a multiple, you like gave her the answers. She's like asked a question and she said, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. You mentioned the Green New Deal. I have always believed, and I have worked on it, that the climate crisis is real, that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to deadlines around time. <laughs> we did that with the inflation reduction. She didn't do it that much in this interview, but that's the funny where the, the answers from Kamala Harris, where it sounds like she just like crammed for a test and she's just trying to get words, add words to the essay to make it go over the limit. Deadlines around time. That is so funny. Act. We have set goals for the United States of America and by extension the globe around when we should meet certain standards for reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. As an example, that value has not changed. My value around what we need to do to secure our border. That value has not changed. I spent two I still can't believe that in a, I just don't understand, like in a world where most people are still paycheck to paycheck, still have real issues. I, don't, I can't believe these politicians can just get on here and talk about climate change in the abstract and meeting like targets that nobody knows with certainty how important it is to hit or miss them. I still can't believe that it's gone down a lot in terms of like how much it gets talked about by politicians, but the the way that whoever is in charge of this, the world organizations, politicians, whatever, have convinced ordinary people that they need to deeply care about carbon emission targets into like the 2070s is incredible. It actually, that... 
like speaking from my own perspective, I hate that, that they've convinced people that don't have a home, that live paycheck to paycheck, who probably most, a lot of these people will never own a home based on how expensive life has gotten in so many countries relative to median wages. And the way they've convinced these people that carbon emissions are a problem in their life, like they cannot have enough money afford to afford, you do even have children, a lot of these people, but they should care about carbon. Meanwhile, private jet everywhere. This Taylor Swift takes a private jet every five seconds. Anyway, rant is over for that, but this issue, <laughs> I don't understand how politi politicians have convinced regular people that they should care deeply about this two terms as the Attorney General of California, prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, violations of American laws regarding the passage, illegal passage of guns, drugs, and human beings across our border. My values have not changed. So that is the reality of it. And four years of being Vice President, I'll tell you one of the, the, the aspects to your point is traveling the country extensively. I mean, I'm here in Georgia, I think somebody told me 17 times since I've been vice president in Georgia alone. I believe it is important to build consensus and it is important to, to, to find a common place of understanding of where we can actually solve problems. On that note, you... Ah, that was just word salad, I don't know. He didn't word salad that much in this interview, but... I mean, for, it just that was so boring and just general talk about I have values and my values haven't changed. And I'm glad Dana eventually jumped in, but I would have liked her. But the thing is, these networks do kind of let Trump go sometimes. They tried to cut him off a bunch of times, but I think just the fact that they tried to cut Trump off so much has like destroyed their reputations because now they come across so partisan. But that and other things, the fact that they've just legitimately become incredibly partisan, but anyway. Had a lot of the point of what I'm saying, that answer by Kamala, in my opinion, was very poor. Republican speakers at the convention, yeah. will you appoint a Republican to your cabinet? Yes, I would. Anyone yes, in I mind? Yes, I would. No one, no one. So not only that, that rambling answer, that was poor. This is, again, the, the first part, like the part one that CNN put out, Dana Bash, I think that's good. The questions are good. The questions are fair and relatively tough. This part is like Kamala just kind of went off on this like minute long empty word salad thing. And Dana just no follow up. Okay. I mean, you could do that in, in a debate where then Trump is there and he's supposed to be the one to challenge what Kamala said. But Dana Bash just said nothing there. She just changed the subject to give that. that is, she just offered up the soft, the, like the biggest softball ever. Would you put a Republican in your cabinet? Pretty easy chance for Kamala to look friendly and just to look like she's someone that would acro reach across the aisle. Another thing, which I haven't even brought up in this interview, which the fact I haven't brought it up is hilarious because it proves the point of what I'm about to say. Tim Walls is just sitting there. <laughs> he hasn't said anything yet. This is this part is the three part video. This video is over halfway done. Tim Walls has he even been on camera. The aesthetic of them all at that little table looks like some sort of break room he is just sitting there so far so why is he even there that like it doesn't make any sense why he's there in the first place because but anyway this is he's just literally a piece of furniture at this point but two between two ferns zach galifianakis beside tim walls and in particular in mine i got it we got 68 days to go with this election so i'm not putting the cart before the horse There's but a i laugh. would i think well, what's he doing there i think it's really important i I have spent my career inviting diversity of opinion. I think it's important to have people at the table when some of the most important decisions are being made that have... But th this, though, is a pointless question. This, th mean, this means nothing. Would you, do, would you appoint a Republican? This is just such a thing where Kamala just sound nice for a while. That, that, that question could just be, here's a, just talk about being nice. And like, well, how are you going to push back on this? What are you going to say? I don't think, who would even object to this? I don't think any like hard left person would be like, you can't have one Republican. That's insane. If you think that, that's crazy. But this question is, <laughs> that's very, that's pointless. Point, There's a pointless question. Different views, different experiences. And I think um, it would be to the benefit of the American public to have a member of my cabinet who was a Republican. Cool. 
I want to ask you about your opponent, Donald Trump. Okay. Um, so th they said part of this interview was edited. I didn't even catch that the first time I watched this. Would that like little phase in with the CNN logo? Is that Does that mean that's a part that was edited? I didn't even catch that the first time, but that graphic just seemed to appear for no reason. I was a little bit surprised. People might be surprised to hear that you have never interacted with him, met him face to face. Mm -hmm. That's going to change soon. But what I want to ask you about. Again, I, I missed that. That's actually quite interesting as well. That Because uh, actually the first time I did watch this, it was kind of on a stream. So maybe the person was talking over, but that. Um, excuse me, that. That's actually quite interesting. They've never met or never, inter never interacted with one another. That's pretty interesting is what he said last month. He suggested that you happened to turn black recently for political Ooh. purposes, mm -hmm. questioning a core part of your identity. Yeah. That was at the National Association of Black Journalists, I believe the group is called. She happened that Trump is, Trump is wild. Who else would say that? And he just, he gets, he got that tough, that journalist at that association was very rude to him. And he just goes off on this rant. Oh, man. The thing is, I, like, the world is so, I believe, so over political correctness that I, I don't think he pays a political price for that at all. Like, may, may, maybe at a time, maybe 10 years ago, somebody would, even five years ago. But, like, I, the, the bar for things like that are um, has changed a lot, I think. As long as you don't actually say something it's like legitimately racist. If you just say like weird remarks, I don't know. Any same old tired playbook. Next question, please. Mm. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Okay. Um, let's talk about some foreign policy uh, issues that would be. See, I didn't even know that was going to come up. That was like perfect. Kamala made my point for me. That was perfect. Thank you, Kamala. In 2020, that would have been problematic language, blah, 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 blah. This is ridiculous. We can't have the rhetoric, blah, blah. Like, I think correctly, by the way, someone, either her or someone who's a, an advisor of the campaign has told her, like, stand up for yourself, stand up for things like that. But if you go into this rant about something that is maybe like a three out of 10, or maybe like a two out of 10, in terms of how serious it actually is in real life, I think correctly, people just go, oh, again, like it's been 15 years of this. So I think that's a smart move by Kamala, actually. So I'll give her points for that, for that answer for sure, because she just acknowledged, I don't, she just basically acknowledged, like, I don't like it, but whatever. So yeah, I'll give her points for that. Polit like In terms of a political calculation, I think it's actually smart. Be on your plate if you become commander in chief. Uh, President Biden has tried unsuccessfully uh, to end the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. He's been doing it for months and months, along with you. Would you do anything differently? For example, would you withhold some U.S. weapons shipments to Israel? That's what a lot of people on the progressive left want you to do. Uh, let me be very clear. This is a good question, though. That's a great, that's a good question. So again, I think CNN does a great job in this interview of the first question. Like, that one softball... Would you point a Republican, whatever? But there's some pretty good questions in here, actually. I'm unequivocal and, and unwavering in my commitment to Israel's defense and its ability to defend itself. And that's not going to change. But let's take a step back. One other point I would make, which, like, I'm a hypocrite saying this, but I'm not running for president. Someone made the point I saw, like, I think on Twitter, she does look at the look down a lot in this interview. And some people say it's because she's, I don't believe that there's notes there. I just, I don't believe that there are. I don't think the chance of that is zero, but I don't think it's very high. I do agree though. And again, the part of saying I'm a hypocrite, I don't have the greatest eye contact either. Like when I talk, I don't look right. The, even the, the camera here, just because I think it kind of distracts me and there's a light right there. But Kamala in this interview is, is looking down a lot as she's answering. I don't know if that's the best body language, really. I think the war in Israel should end the war with Hamas. Like, it actually is pretty true. When I, or when I heard that point, it, she does look down a lot when she's speaking. So take that for what it's worth. I don't consider it a big deal because I didn't even notice it, but 
I did hear that point on on X, and I guess I think it's a little bit of a big deal because I'm bringing it up, so. October 7, 1,200 people were massacred. Many young people who were simply attending a music festival. Women were horribly raped. As I that might have been Tim Walls' only contribution to the section. She looked at him. <laughs> she just looked at him. That's Tim. That's Tim putting in the work there. Look at this. Many young people who were simply attending a music festival. The look, a music Women festival, were horribly right? raped. Then the... As I said then, I say today, subject. Israel had Terrible. a right, has a right to defend itself. We would. And how it does so matters. Far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. And we have got to get a deal done. We, we were in Doha. Mm -hmm. We have to get a deal done. This war must end. In the meantime, and we must get a deal that is about getting the hostages out. I've met with the families of the American hostages. Let's get the hostages out. Let's get the ceasefire done. But no change in policy in terms of arms and... and that's a good follow-up point to CNN. That's like actually like that. That is probably the the real criticism of this interview, which I totally agree with. That I saw people making online is lack of follow-ups that are relevant. But that's a good one. And the thing is, the tone. I mean, CNN. I, there could have they could have went a lot more, been a lot more pressing. Um, I made this point in the other video. I think CNN's trying to not do that as much. I want Trump to go on CNN and see what happens because CNN in the past has just been like the 10, maybe like a nine out of 10 combative to anything Trump says. So they would never, they would go, what do you mean? What do you mean? Trump, you think this, you think that, you think that they would just push as hard as they can. But I think they've based just on that debate, really, they've dialed it back, but I'm, maybe they just go right back to criticizing Trump. But at least she falls up here. It sounds kind of weak. She's like, oh, do you think you'd, change anything let's see what calm so says. forth no i we have to so forth no i we have to good policy it's out let's get the ceasefire done but no change in policy in terms of arms and and so forth no i we have to get a deal done Dan, dana we have to get a deal done when you look at <clears throat> so i think that's probably politically weak from kamala to say that because She's in the administration. She's the VP. And you just say, we have to get a deal done. Everyone th thinks that. We have to get a deal done. It means nothing. Again, that means that just, uh, like, everyone thinks that. So if you're going to say no change from Biden's policy, it, whatever Biden's doing is not working. It's not his country, but I think that opens the door for Donald Trump to say, what do you mean you're going to change nothing? It's like, whatever's happening... That war has been going on now almost a year. That was actually like October 7th. That's coming up on 11 months ago. That's terrible. So I think that's actually a very weak answer by Kamala, to be honest, to say, no, we have to get a deal done. Everyone thinks that. But there hasn't been a deal yet. The significance of this to the families, to the people who are living in that region. And again, that, like th this is just run out the clock, say things that everyone agrees with. Um, it, a deal is not only the right thing to do to end this war, but will unlock so much of what must happen next. I remain committed since I've been on October 8 to what we must do to work toward a two-state solution, where Israel is secure and in equal measure, the Palati Palestinians have security and self-determination and, and dignity. So that's the end there. That was a nothing, absolutely nothing answer, really. Just, we need to do this. I'm not going to change anything. We have to make a deal. We don't, we want to end it. Like, I, that was a nothing answer, I think. And if you really think about the issues, I think Donald Trump gets, like, I think if this is an issues election, this is my opinion, Trump will win because foreign wars, Trump has a better record than the Biden-Harris administration. Uh, immigration, he has a better record. Economy, he has a better record. No one, like, if you're being honest and you realize that every, both administrations would, it would have been a zoo during COVID economically for both of them. Like, they made that point in the part one of this video. 
they wouldn't have kept the economy open. And like that would have been, there's no way Biden and Harris would have just kept the economy open, not done quarantines, not done lockdowns. There's no way. The economy would have taken a massive hit there. Trump had a good economy with no inflation, essentially. Like one, it was below the target. It's like 1.6, I think, roughly as the average. Um, and this administration has a decent economy in terms of the total GDP, but lots of inflation. So it's not been good. Like for maybe if you're like a, someone that owns technology stocks, you've still done fine. If you just own an index fund, you've still done fine. Although there's been a lot of inflation that has got into your gains. But for the average person, this administration has been fine. For a young person, homes in the United States are up, I think, close to maybe even more, close to 40%. They might have even ticked over recently. It's somewhere in that ballpark. That's terrible for like a young person if you're looking to buy a home. So on the issues I think Trump has the edge, another thing is <laughs> Tim Walls. That was 8.30, 8 minutes, 30 seconds, this clip. Why is Tim Walls there? Can someone tell me that? What's he doing? She looked at him once. That was his contribution to this entire 8 minutes and 30 seconds. I don't think he said one word, and the camera might have panned to him twice. So what's he doing there? Like, it just try to answer in the comments, I guess. What's the point? Just the piece of furniture just sitting there, a little smirk. Anyway, with that said, this is the end of part two. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you agree with any of this. If you disagree, either way, thank you for watching. Have a good day.